This is a legion that's been training for God knows how long because warp time is a joke. Tyranids could be eating world after world and Grey Knights will go, huh? Suck, suck. There's one of them who's just stranded in the warp right now and demons just leave him be. I am Isander. And I am Coda. And thank you for tuning into this episode on the Grey Knights. The Grey Knights. Yep. Uh, first They're more o- silvery than they are gray. And I'd still call them gray. Gray. I'd still call them gray. But today we're going to cover the Grey Knights, where they come from, what they do, why you will never, ever see one or want to see one. Or should see one. Exactly. The custodies and how they feel about the Grey Knights, as well as their super secret box hidden somewhere secret box oh one million percent what's in the box we'll find out later this is the that's the part where you say pain no it's actually not pain nobody knows anyway we'll get to that later first and most important bit of business is no yellow shirt today no yellow shirt today nope uh despite the fact that you guys love it the studio is arctic today so we are going with the turtleneck so i don't freeze to death it will be making a comeback at some point Hopefully soon. The yellow shirt. For the you, classic yellow shirt. For you audio listeners, you still get the smooth voice, so it's a win-win. <laughs> I will be disappeared into the night if I do not properly set the scale for these guys. So let's do that. Of the tens of thousands of you watching and listening right now, which, as an aside, insane to say, insane to say, about... Insanely great. I know, insanely great. We love you guys. Most of you would be guardsmen, though. I love you, but most of you are guardsmen. That's a fact. Something like 99% of you would be frontline cannon fodder that will die in 15 hours tops. That's just 40k. <clears throat> That's just 40k. That's just 40k, baby. Maybe, maybe 50 of you would go on to be like proper space marines. And that's me being generous. Those odds are a lot worse. But for the sake of generosity, 50 of you would be space marines, right? One of you would be a Grey Knight. Oh, no. Maybe two. Tops. Being very generous. If you actually want to go with the statistics, a quarter of a person would be a Grey Knight. You'd have a Grey Knight hand, maybe, out of all of us. You will never and should never see a Grey Knight. They are basically unknown for a couple of reasons we're going to get into today. But one of them is they're so rare. They're so rare. They're technically the last spa- well, there's not the last because there's new chapters every five seconds. But they were the last ones created un- like directly under the Emperor's purview. It was a Hail Mary pass at the end of the Horus Heresy, at the very end of it. Um, that Horus Heresy is basically family feud on an intergalactic scale. <laughs> that is all you need to know. It's family feud on an intergalactic scale with Steve Harvey <coughs> just shouting, Kill! 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 That, that is exactly what's been going on. Their whole purpose was to improve upon this entire space marine thing. See, an ungodly large freak of nature who fires bottle-sized bullets is hilarious. No, 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 no. It was pointed out by someone in our community Discord that these are not bottle-sized. They are... Monster energy tall boy can sized. <laughs> Those sized bullets that explode on impact is hilarious until it's turned on you. And that is what the em- <laughs> that's what the emperor figured out during the Horus Heresy when half of his favorite toys turned on his Imperium. My action figures. <laughs> Basically, they trashed the place. Not one world was left. Uh, well, most worlds were were touched by the heresy. Yeah, directly, it was bad. So, in complete desperation, the emperor sent out his right hand man, Malkador, to find him some worthy candidates to lead a new chapter that's gonna be an improvement upon this whole project that's clearly not working too great at the moment. Space Marines two, kind of, kind of. Space mm- Marines one point five. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. This isn't any guy either. Malkador deserves his own episode. He's woefully, woefully underrepresented because he's so cool. Not only is he the emperor's right hand man and somebody who the emperor talks to like an equal, he's able to outright scold Primarchs like he's their uncle. Yeah. And, and if that's not enough, as we all know, the emperor sits on the golden throne, a massive psychic beacon turned life support machine 
its entire purpose is to amplify the hell out of anybody who sits on it and kind of serve as a center point in this fast travel network the emperor was trying to build because fast travel in 40k sucks you have to walk through the devil's front lawn to get anywhere it's <laughs> not great so he was trying to build a better version like the eldar have right this golden throne was the center of it and it requires you to be one hell of a psyker right to again to give you a sense of scale the em the emperor sits on it and it boosts his light to be visible all over the galaxy it, he becomes a lighthouse sitting it's a, on it's it. It's a big psychic lighthouse, yeah. Exactly. Anybody lesser turns to dust if they so much as touch it. When Horus made it to the Emperor's front door and the Emperor had to leave the chair to go fight him, Malkador sat in his stead. And he didn't get, like, fried? He did at the very end. Don't get oh. me wrong. But, 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 but he held it running for the entire duration of that fight. He only turned to dust when the Emperor was returned, broken and battered, onto the throne. That's impressive. R right? So Malkador deserves his own episode. One hell of a guy. This is who the Emperor sent out to find, um, to scout people worthy of this new project. And he came back with eight. Eight. <laughs> that's, that's the best he could find. Eight. Eight to lead this new project. Granted, they were really cool. They were those guys. They were eight, a, eight, eight big guys, but not no more. <laughs> but no more. Well, technically, he found twelve. The Grey Knights and the Inquisition go hand in hand. Mm. So the total number Malkador found were twelve. Four were regular people, though they're really esteemed um, lords and regents and all that. So they they went on to form the Inquisition as we know it today. The other eight went on to lead the Grey Knights, and they got the seal of approval from the Emperor himself. So, with that being co-signed, he rendezvoused with uh, the rest of his units, who'd been scouring the universe as well, to find good candidates. And they didn't just check in Imperial Worlds. They checked everywhere for the best psychers who were both loyal and duty-focused. And then had them go through the most rigorous interrogation possible to see if they were even corruptible. Yeah, because so, this was the end. This was towards the end of the Horus, the Horus, the Horus. <laughs> this is towards the end of the Horus heresy. So they're just like, we can't have you turn traitor now. Like you are our last ditch. If you turn traitor, we're we're screwed. Exactly. There was zero bias in the selection process. They got anyone they could. So some people came from Imperial worlds, worlds that knew the heresy and saw it firsthand, and you know they came hardened from that. Others were people who were brought into this intergalactic war at the end of it. They're like, wait. So they just found out Space Jesus is having a family feud. There's a Horacy right now? I, I, exactly. When did this start? And those guys still signed on. Oh. That's the most impressive thing. These people who just now found out about all this were like, yeah, okay, I'm down. And they passed all the tests. But that's not the only reason the Grey Knights are impressive. Because... Most space marines get their gene seed from a Primarch. This is one of the Emperor's sons. Usually it's a facet of the Emperor. Is the easiest way to think about it. They have one thing he's really good at, and they're really good at it. Yeah. Not as well-rounded as the Emperor at all, right? It's the blueprint for a space marine, sometimes even altering their personality a bit to better fit it, right? Uh, the Grey Knight's blueprint is the Emperor's. It just comes directly from him. It's it's directly from the source. <laughs> yeah. So here Christ. are these these best from the Imperium, given the gene seed from the Emperor himself, and then Malkador covered the planet in all kinds of sigils and then threw it into the warp. Oh. He's really powerful. Oh. Safely. That's the most important thing, because safely threw it into yeah, the warp. Safely chucked it into the warp. Most people would have screwed it up. Yeah, Most and then the entire planet's insane now. Yeah, no, he threw it into the warp for safekeeping. And left instructions with the four other, because remember, 12, 8 went with the Grey Knights, the other yeah. four went on to And the then four joined the Inquisition with the Righteous yep. Fury. <laughs> we need to stop with the For Honor references. <laughs> it's a problem. And, and told those four that, hey, they'll be back eventually. Keep an eye out for them. And then went on to go do the whole sit on Golden Throne, turn to dust thing. Yeah, it's, it's Malkador lived a rough, had a rough ending. It, really cool guy, though. Yeah. Also, fun fact, he's one of the few people who know what happened to the second and the eleventh Primarch. Mm -hmm. 
he carries that secret. Well, mm-hmm. carried it to his grave, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. What a million percent. And so, that is where the Grey Knight plot ended for all of five seconds. The horsey. I God, made you I do it. I it. made you oh, do it. <laughs> the Horus Heresy ended. The emperors left a quadriplegic on the throne. And then, in a few years afterwards, the planet came back. It just popped right back out. The Inquisition was expecting this, but pretty much nobody else was. But this was post heresy. Think of it as rebuilding after World War Two. Not yeah. everybody's going to notice everything. Yeah. I'm not going to notice an extra building where there wasn't one. These were the seed vaults after the apocalypse. They just randomly opened back up. Not not even. There was just so much chaos. And this was also when Gilman was splitting every legion up into chapters. Uh, <laughs> so there was a lot of just... A lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. So nobody noticed when the Inquisition found a new chapter without a declared Primarch and just put them in as the 666th. <laughs> Nobody they're, noticed. They're the 666th. Yes, they are. <laughs> I love the Grey Knights. I I say this about they're the anti Satan force. I say this about every <laughs> every respect. faction, every faction. Partially because I've said this before. I'll say it again. Whenever I'm covering a faction, I take the approach of it's state mandated hype man. I am there for them in a way nobody else can be. <laughs> but the Grey Knights. Actually have become one of my favorites after reading about them. And part of it is how hard they lean into the whole demons and demon hunter thing. Starting with the 666th Legion. I love that. Isn't... Right? That's so good. And then... So stupid, but so good. I, they're fantastic. And then, now, they're an official chapter. They have been trained. You know, it's only been a few years for the people outside the warp, but time in the warp is a joke. It's funky. So, they came out fully prepared. This is a legion that's been training for... God knows how long, because warp time is a joke. Yeah. So, they set out to do the work that they were originally created to do, which is the other reason you will never see a Grey Knight. And this one's the most concerning one. (laughs) But before we get into that, did you know that we actually upload two whole episodes every week? Two? Yes. The only way to get the other one is to go to patreon.com slash Coda. That is right. Over there, you can get a special bonus episode every week, like clockwork, I might add. And you get access to the community Discord, which has been incredible fun to keep up with. And you get access to the limited run patches we put out every time we hit a goal. We're right now working on 500, and we have about 100 slots left. So if you want to get in on that, now is the time. About 110 I checked earlier today. I'm, I'm future-proofing it because we're going to have 100 by then. Ah, uh, yeah. Exactly. So you want to get in on that before the spots are gone. If you're already there, thank you very much. You're the only way this is possible. And if you want to join in, head on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. For you amazing video enthusiasts, we are also on the road to 10K. That's right. You boys are very close to getting that sweet, sweet wooden plaque. Right there. And I want it. I need that wooden YouTube plaque. The wooden plaque. The wooden plaque. We, we don't have steel yet, but we're going to get the wooden one for okay. sure. We're going up for the, through the ranks. Mm-hmm. After wooden, we'll have the stone. The stone plaque. Okay, I could I could arrange for a wood plaque easily. Where the hell do you expect me to find a stone plaque? We will find a stone plaque, I guess. <laughs> this is part of my homework now. Yay. Stone, bronze... Silver. Yeah. So if you aren't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. It's the only language the machine speaks. It's either that or 30-second dance clips. That's about it. That's all the machine speaks. It kind of doesn't like long-form content like this. So if you want to help us keep making this... I mean, there is a huge difference between 30 seconds and a full hour. I know. I know. Yeah, so if you want to help us keep making this, please, please, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really like the video, tell a friend. For you amazing audio listeners, keep that energy. You guys have been leaving the five-star reviews. I've been seeing those. You've been subscribing with the auto-download. We see those as well. We are aware on Spotify right now we are listed in the wrong section. I'm working with them to get that mended. It is harder than one would think. Spotify is touchy. Spotify is touchy. So we are working on that. But for those of you over there, thank you so much for being you. We appreciate it. And we appreciate you sharing the content with other people. It's the only way we're able to grow and keep doing this. So thank you very much. And now, 
back on topic. The other more concerning reason you will never see them is they only care about heretics and chaos. That is it. When they were mm. created at the end of the heresy, the emperor didn't foresee the Tyranids being a thing. He didn't foresee the Necrons being a thing. He didn't foresee the Eldar ever being relevant again. He just thought chaos is going to end it all. And to be fair, they're kind of doing, right doing that right now. So. so the Grey Knights are singularly focused. It's... It's one of the things that makes them very unique from the rest of the Imperium. Because the rest of the Imperium is really, really equal opportunity. Hence the chant, burn the heretic, kill the mutant, purge the unclean. They'll fight anything, basically. Yeah. But I want you to notice that those definitions can be expanded to cover whatever the hell whoever is in charge wants. They're very open-ended. Yeah. Uh, One million percent. What's a heretic? Who's a heretic? Who defines unclean? If I'm in charge, it could be anybody named Leroy. Just by default. The hell is a mutation being less than seven feet tall? No, a mutation is being named a Leroy. No, 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 no. Mine's Humphrey. I'm sorry to any Humphreys in our fan base, but oh, no. change your name now, heretic. <laughs> Basically, it is one of the biggest reasons behind Imperial Bloat, because anybody at any time could be an enemy. It's not well defined at all. Kind of on purpose. Again, it's supposed to be a brutal regime that barely works. Yeah. Part of that barely works is it's fighting everybody all the time, everywhere. Yeah, the it's part of the part of the machine, the, it, it, the war machine. Exactly. The Grey Knights actually bother to specify what they're after. It is demons, chaos, and heretics. That's it. That is period. If they bump into, first of all, they actually will not bother being anywhere near anything else. Let's just start there. They're not deployed for anything but that. Yeah. So Tyranids could be eating world after world, and Grey Knights will go, hmm, sucks, suck. That's not what the Emperor made me for. Tyranids, I sleep. <laughs> Pretty much. And that's, I, I really, this is one of the reasons they grow on me so much. I love the fact that a lot of their strength comes from that singular focus. Because... It's kind of what the Ultramarines suffer from, where they're good at everything. They're spread out too thin. They're, they're spread out too thin. Uh, poor writers have made them spectacular at everything. But when written properly, they're kind of not the best at any one thing. Mm -hmm. Grey Knights are really good at this one thing. And it makes them a menace. But they won't show up for anything else. Which is one of their biggest problems. Because again, the Tyranids are eating so much right now. Yeah, we kind of need an anti-Tyranid force now instead of an anti-heretic force. E exactly, but for them, it's real simple. Are you dangerously angry, horny, contagious, or conniving? Get purged. If you're not, carry on. So if you, if you get if you get a a, a gray knight come to visit, you you got you got a silver armor, big bulky figure knocking at your door. Hide. They don't knock. <laughs> We're gonna get into their 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 combat doctrines, but one of my favorite things they do is they'll just teleport. They're they are <laughs> such good psychers that they can just teleport. Places. They literally hit you with the teleports behind you. Nothing personnel, kiddo. Mm -hmm. And most people will go. We'll, we'll, we'll get to why you shouldn't teleport mid fight, especially when you're a demon. But <laughs> they can do it with ease and gusto. But moral of the story is, if my house is on fire. The Grey Knight's gonna walk right past me to get the demon that got it. Like, I, I'm, I'm a rounding error to them. That's, yeah, they are the epitome of that one quote by Malcolm X: "By any means necessary, they will do what it takes to kill a demon. Sometimes summoning other demons. Oh yeah, because again, chaos is always infighting and bickering. So, so Grey Knights can take advantage of this and summon one group of demons to fight another. And just say they demon fight. If if we can't get listen, my job is to kill that demon. If the only way to do that is by summoning another demon to break that wall, I will do it. And then I'll just kill the demon I summoned. It's, par they're partially, this leads to them being written really poorly sometimes, because some people take it too far. Like, great, great. It's a, it's a problem in 40k, where there's this, like, there's this Goldilocks zone of grimdark, where it's really bad, and it can get way too bad, but it can also just get way too good, you know mm. what I mean? Like, Ultramarines have suffered from the way too good spectrum. They've won, there are more named Ultramarines than there are, 
then there are some entire factions models. <laughs> it's kind of a problem. There are more named Ultramarines than oh god, I think Harlequin models. Yeah, it's 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 they've had it too good for too long. They're the blue and boys. I'm an Ultramarine fan, and I can admit that they're 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 just easy to appeal to everybody. They're and blue. On the way too bad spectrum, you have stuff like the Demonculaba, where it's like, oh great. <laughs> I'm going to have a ball of a time explaining this to my friends. Like, no, trust me. 40K is great. Ignore that. Right? I know nothing about the Demonculaba, and everybody who I ask about it has hyped it up as just like, this is awful. <laughs> Don't research it. Don't research it. Which is, yeah. Sometimes the Grey Knights fall into that that territory just because, again, they will do what it takes. Mm. But it's also in a believable way, if that makes sense. Because, again, singularly focused. They only want to do this one thing. Yeah. It would make sense that they'd get a bit extreme. Sometimes a bit much. Mm. Like, one of my least favorite stories is um, they're frequently paired with, you know, Sisters of Battle because they're super holy and all that. And, again, they're... Anti-heretic. Yeah, they're another anti-heretic faction. There has been a story where they needed to consecrate weapons and armor in a really quick way. So they just drained blood from a Sister of Battle. They said it's time to get medieval medicinal on. on this. Yeah, yeah. Ba- I'm really boiling down the plot, but yes, to bless weapons in a pinch, they just broke them like a glow stick. <laughs> and I'm like, that's that's a bit grim. That's a bit. They're already very grim. That's much dark as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. Fair enough. I'll give you that. It's, it's grim, grim dark. Grim, it's grim dark. Yeah, it's grim dark. But. Even, again, it's really hard to top the Demonculava. That's about the worst the Grey Knights have ever gotten. Beyond that, they tend to stay towards the edge, but that's the fun of them. Yeah. They tend to be really bad, but, you know, I'm okay with that. It, it's like Doom Slayer level bad, where it's just like, this is gory and awful, but also hilariously fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one, one million percent. <laughs> I mean, they are, in one of the books, a squad of Grey Knights is sent to kill Angron, and at no point is that a joke. That is a very real possibility. They just say, go kill him. Get him. They, they have set out to kill Angron, and the book treats it like it's possible. <laughs> and it is. Yeah. In Angron's most recent rampage, where he broke a planet, they almost got him. Well, damn. Yeah. They're very good at this singular task, because they'll do whatever it takes that's actually impressive. Right? Because if it wasn't for Korn standing up, they would have got him. Okay, well, a few other things. But yeah, yeah, they, they, they baited him into a trap. They, they almost got him. Damn. When, when they're done right, it gives them this otherworldly, monstrous feeling. They big. It's, I would, I would pay so much money for a horror game where the roles are reversed instead of, oh God, I'm a civilian hiding from a demon. It's, I'm a demon and there's a gray knight coming. <laughs> Not even a squad, though a squad would be more terrifying, a single gray knight coming. Just a single. It, it would be horrifying. It would be horrifying. Just, okay. Uh, Games Workshop, here is our pitch. Dead by daylight, but you're a bunch of demons hiding from a gray knight. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'd pay money for that. I would pay. I'd fork over cash for that horror game. They are the antithesis to chaos. There's one of them who's just stranded in the warp right now, and demons just leave him be. (laughs) Is he stranded in the warp, or is the warp stranded in there with him? (laughs) (laughs) That's that's what it feels like. They've even shared in the nickname that the Emperor got from chaos, which is the Anathema. Because most, most, you have to understand, most psychers, when they use a ton of warp powers, it's scary. You have to fortify your mind because demons are waiting to take you over and yeah. corrupt you every time you try. When you use your psychic abilities, they're mm-hmm. whispering into your brain, just like, hey, wouldn't mm-hmm. it be cool if you just, like, I don't know, got horny, killed that guy over there, uh, popped a pimple and, a, a, I don't know, made a deal with some shady m- money shark? That that is exactly right. Every psyker, even space marine psychers, have to steal their resolve before reaching into the warp to do something. Grey Knights have the gene seed from the Emperor directly. They share in his complete incorruptibility. Not one has ever fallen to chaos. 
forever. They use a psychic. They use a psychic ability, and they just use it. Whenever they reach into the warp, demons go. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's it's, yours now. It's yours now. It's, that's, yours it's now. fine. You, you can have that. I, I don't care. I'm not mad. Go yeah. wild. <laughs> this gives them a unique relationship. They're not borrowing from the warp. It's almost like they're shaping it the way the emperor does. They're not borrowing. It, they own the warp. It's second. It's, theirs. it's second nature to them. It's so cool. I mean, there have been stories where blind and deaf monks have been assaulted by chaos because chaos doesn't care if you're disabled. They don't care. I don't know. I don't care what plaque you have in your car. I'm totaling it. Okay? That That's how chaos operates. And when Grey Knights appeared, they could feel their presence in the warp mm. as bright, flashing lights. They they heard doom music start playing. <laughs> Exactly. One of another one of the many reasons demons fear them, and again, why they would make great horror movie uh, antagonists, is they have a quiet hum around them. It's you can demons specifically can hear a faint choir around them. That's frightening. It, you can just hear faint choral music, and it gets louder the more gray nights there are. They literally do hear the doom music starting. <laughs> and if there's a Justicar, which is their version of a commander nearby, he amplifies that. That's hilarious. <laughs> and just hearing that alone weakens a demon's grip on reality. Because just l- l- really, really, really weak demons will hear that and immediately slip back. The demons are just going, oh god, oh god, oh god, not him, not them, not them, not them. N- not even that. They'll just slip back into the warp. Just hearing that for, again, really, really weak demons immediately gone just poof just, gone they, they didn't have a strong grip on the material to begin with just a gray being around was enough they're just poof, gone they, exactly they can teleport around battlefields because again what is the warp gonna do to me i own it i, I shape it I, <laughs> it is mine they have a fantastic quote where it's like what do i have to fear from a demon <laughs> they they treat it like it's something to be it's not anything otherworldly to them it's just something I have to fight. Second nature. It's, it's just, it's it's my thing. Exactly. Most people who tr- who would try to battlefield teleport next to a demon would either go stark raving mad, wind up in the wrong place, or just be grabbed by more demons because you're walking through Satan's front lawn. Of course more demons are going to grab you. Exactly. They, they also consistently find and use demons' true names, which is really hard i didn't know this earlier i had to find this out when researching them because they're ever changing chaos is always moving so is the warp so a demon's true name they spend tons of resources just trying to piece it together because it's ever shifting but when they do find it they can banish the hell out of a demon using it because they're just like hey paul and then the demon just goes Poof. Mm-hmm. they've even gotten some of the demon primarch's true names really yes and it's not it's not just angron it's it's a very specific i was wondering because it's just like... almost like getting their ip address <laughs> it's it's doxing a demon basically mm. so they've gotten them again they're ever changing so i'm not sure if they still have them but on that mission where they were like we're gonna go kill angron they had them in the back pockets i'm just like just in case just not just in case they'll use it there's no just in case about it if i see angron i'm sending him back to where he came from yeah it's a f- i i Love them. They also know words of banishment, of which there are 666 of them. Have you noticed a trend yet? I've noticed a trend. And just like the true names are ever-changing, but these ones are really powerful. Think of it as you could immediately banish a demon using them. You could bind them. You could um, get them to do something you wanted right then and there. It's a really powerful thing to have over a demon Pretty much nobody else uses them, because if you look at one, your eyes will hollow out and you'll go mad. Oh. Even Grey Knights have to brace before they use them. Mm. It, they, they have to go, and then use it. It's really difficult to use these. There's only one Grey Knight who's learned all 666, and he was their first leader, Janus. Mm-hmm. He was a whole lot. He had like... Part of a Primarch. There's a lot going on with Janus. He's another episode in and of himself. He's a he's a big guy in a crowd of big guys. But he learned all 666 words of banishment. So you could just look at a demon and say, I don't know, flubber fluff, and it's gone now. 
Exactly. <laughs> and if the words of banishment weren't enough and the true names weren't enough and the whole by any means necessary thing wasn't enough, they also have Necron Tesseract Labyrinths. Th- they got a hold of those? Oh, yeah. By any means necessary. I mean, fair enough. My job is to fight demons. If I have to pay that weird robot to help me with it, I'm doing it. <laughs> I. It is... Do you know how easy life is knowing you actually have a divine purpose? Mm-hmm. Being born and going, God asked me to do this single thing. I'm going to do it. And I don't care about whatever it takes to get that. I would, is is Trazen their back-end dealer? I don't know how they got them specifically. Trazen, you got the stuff, I got the cash. <laughs> but the, those labyrinths are actually very effective against demons, not only because it's a pocket labyrinth that would suck to be trapped in, uh, but they also derive energy from your escape attempts. So the stronger you are trying to get out, the stronger the labyrinth's walls are. You're fueling it. That's... Which means, in theory, on paper, if you got anger on there, he'd never leave because he would never stop trying to he'd escape. Just bashing the walls with the demon sword he's got. You just have a box going, ah, at the top of its lungs for eternity. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody's tried that. But again, I think the biggest problem there is getting close enough. It's really He's hard. He's going to hit you really hard if you try you, it. Even for a Grey Knight, it's kind of hard to get in Imagine st- sticking, sticking that in a Honda. D-Tech just kicked in. Oh, God. And it's just Angron screaming in it's the engine Angron bay. Angron screaming in the engine bay. Yeah. Every single weapon they use, aside from those ones we listed, like their physical weapons, like their guns and their swords, are they're force weapons, which means they're... It's a regular sword that's also amplified by how good of a psyker I am. Mm. So it's really neat because your basic Grey Knight and your super duper best Grey Knights use the same sword technically. But the Grand Master sword is a lot stronger. It can cut through demon princes with ease. It's so scary. And meanwhile, a normal Grey Knight sword is it's still a lot, but it's not that. So it, it gives them this... It scales with your faith stat. Basically. It gives them this very neat feeling of, I started with this weapon, and I will die with this weapon. Oh, they literally do the whole, this is my weapon. There are many like it, but this one is mine routine. Exactly. All their weapons are, before they even touch them, they're some of the best built of all weapons in the Imperium. I think only custodies have better gear than them. Yeah, they have, their guns are built to a different standard, then they're shipped over somewhere to be prayed over for a while, and blessed in every possible way, because that does actually help if you're fighting demons, it, it, and then it, given to a Grey Knight. Yeah. Their bolters have two barrels, so they can fire twice the bullets. They are double barrel. Oh, yes. That's insane. And still full auto. That's insane. I can't. I couldn't manage the recoil from a single barrel bolter. Imagine double barrel, and they're just firming it. Well, okay. There's a, there's a trend in sci-fi of this weapon. If you fire it, it'll break your arm. Like there's a big Krogan shotgun in Mass Effect. That one's just going to shred your arm off. A stock bolter. You have to hold it with both arms and like well, use your, your entire out. hand for the trigger. Not if you're a grain out, they're just mounted to their wrists. <laughs> if you're a grain out, you're built different. Oh, exactly. Literally. And all their armor and all their weapons are also carved with those same prayers and uh, purity seals and all that. They have basically somebody opened the holy book and wrote a good chunk of it onto their weapons and armor. And whatever didn't fit, they ripped those pages out and then stapled them onto. So Grey Knights have this really cool aesthetic of silvered armor with prayers carved all over it and massive sheets of paper um, full of more prayers just wafting off. It's so cool. I saw that one looking at some of their it's art. So it was just cool. like, it was it was so cool just seeing like the random words printed all over the armor. It I'm It's t- a really cool aesthetic. I'm telling you they've grown on me a lot. Like I already liked Warhammer's weird aesthetic of let's let's just strap books all over our armor somewhere, but mm-hmm. like the plaques, the bronze and like brass and golden plaques all over the armor, mm-hmm. really cool look. It's they're fantastically amazing. Again, this is why they'd make great horror movie villains for a demon, because God, I wouldn't want to fight that. Because to us, those words probably just look, look like words. But mm-hmm. to a demon, it's just a burning fire of like, uh, uh, 
Exactly. They're not just close range. They have long range. They can they can use psychic abilities. They can teleport. They are a lot. And I would still rather get a blood transfusion from Nurgle than see one. Even as a regular person, because this is the last reason you'll never see a Grey Knight. And this one's the Emperor's fault. <laughs> because in his... I'm not going to mock him too much, because it makes sense. His logic was sound. In 40k, the only way to kill a god, unless you are a god, is to deprive them of worship. No worship, dead. So his logic was, well, if nobody knows about chaos, nobody will worship chaos. Therefore, it'll just starve. He did not realize that chaos is actually kind of orderly and balanced in a way. It's a bit more complex than if if worship God, if no worship, no God. It, no, it is it is that still, but there, it, it's it's really fundamental and almost. It, it's like the concept of yin and yang. Nurgle specifically is is a great representation of that because yes, sure, he's a god of plague, death, decay, and all that, but everything has to end. That's Nurgle's part. I have to like make sure everything ends so that somebody else can build after me. That's his piece. That's all. So what Biggie didn't realize is if I hide this from people, it just makes it easier for you to fall to them. Because, okay, cool, you don't know who Korn is per se, but if you want to be disciplined, fight honorably, and go for good battles, you're, you're worshiping inadvertently by... worshipping him. Yeah. And you're not bracing against the consequences of that. For example, I am all for improvement and strategy. Usually... Most problems in my life I sort through by thinking and changing accordingly. I would fall for Zinch like that. Yeah. And I wouldn't know any better because he never saw fit to tell me, oh yeah, by the way, side effects include tentacles sprouting from everywhere, eyes coming out of nowhere, and he's also the god of stabbing you in the back. I'm an I'm an arts I'm an artsy type, so I would fall to Slanesh in a second, and then I'd have the strings attached of like Hey, <laughs> welcome, welcome to my weird garden. Exactly. We also have tentacles, but they're different from sieges. So in his infinite wisdom, the emperor kind of allowed a lot of the Imperium to fall to chaos easily. And some of his sons to do the same. Because they could never prepare. Grey Knights get to prepare. They actually know all of chaos in its, in its entirety. The average person does not. Because... The Imperium has compounded on this mistake hard. They, because Malkador's not around anymore, the Emperor's not around anymore, most of his kids are not around anymore, nobody was there to guide this Imperial thesis. They just so, went by the last orders. So they went by the last orders and took them to the logical extreme. So now, if you know about chaos, you're shot for it. It's, it's, it's heresy to even mention chaos, which means... Nobody can ever prepare for it. Mm. Ever. And if you can't prepare for it and you don't know that there's hope against it, you will fall to it every time. Yeah, because you'll just inadvertently think about like, hmm, maybe I should eat oats this morning instead of instead of like a, a protein bar and mm. like your self-improvement and then you accidentally... Summon zinch into your room. Exactly. You know, one day you're eating oats, the next you're pouring blood into your cornflakes. <laughs> it's one of his biggest mistakes that has been fueling chaos for thousands of years. I say this to tell you that Grey Knights will just kill people for seeing them. Because they're one of the most tightly guarded secrets. And most people who have been exposed to chaos, again don't know about it they'll just fall to it oh after a while they've now been tainted it's a it's a demon they don't know so literally a demon they don't know they, so. they've not been tainted so if a gray knight comes to save you run because you're next if they're if they're there and the demonic incursion is bad enough because there's not many of them so if they show up somewhere it's usually a horrific it's, it's, it's bad bad it's horrific so if they're showing up somewhere you're already corrupted by chaos you're gonna fall at some point so they're not even gonna take the risk they're just gonna kill you and they're and gonna they're they gonna kill the demons and turn around and kill you and if they don't the inquisition will kill you for sure so not many people get to see gray knights because not many people live to tell the tale well some people get to see gray knights but it's the last thing they ever see oh one million percent 
Unfortunately, this relationship with the Inquisition leads to some of their worst writing. Like, for example, there's this there's someone who's onto Armageddon to deal with a demonic incursion, and it doesn't even cover the planet like it normally would. It's a small portion. Most people don't know it actually happened. And the Inquisition was like, cool, but you know how we operate, right? Kill everybody on the planet. And the Grey Knights were like, okay. Okay, fine, whatever. Again, by any means necessary, which leads to this story where they're just going to world after world after world, exterminating it for no reason other than they maybe possibly heard about chaos. Mm. I'm like, I'd like the Grey Knights to have more um, autonomy from the Inquisition. Yeah. But it's never been that bad since, so who knows. They also tried to ransack the Space Wolves planet, so... That didn't go well for I'm them. I'm sure Lehman Russ loved that. Lehman Russ isn't around anymore. Oh, wow. Well. It's the other guy. But, yeah. So, that is the only large problem I have with the Grey Knights. They occasionally get a bit too grimdark, and they occasionally get treated like the Inquisition's lapdogs, which is lame for how cool they are. But beyond that, they're they're incredible. They're incredibly fun. They, are, they look cool. They sound cool. They're the Doom Slayer in. They're all collectively the Doom Slayer in 40k. I love that. And more them again because they're psychers. The more of them that are in an area, the stronger they become. I love that. So a single granite's bad. A squad is worse. If you ever see all of them assembled, which you should never, but if you do, oh god, you're screwed. Her bone. Your bone. Yeah. You are you are a demon, but you are also Bender looking into the sky, going, "We're boned." One million. Percent. Oh, and my, my I fav- referenced that twice because I love that so much. Oh yeah, and my favorite my favorite thing about the Grey Knights is, like I mentioned, there's one of them rampaging through the warp right now, and if you fall to chaos and you try and summon a demon, there's like a one in a hundred chance you'll summon a Grey Knight instead, and that's so funny to me. You could just roll a one and... Oh, there's a Grey Knight here. Ah, Grey Knight. Hello. Guess I'm dead. (laughs) Unfortunate. Whoops. Whoops. I almost forgot, and this would have gotten me black bagged if I didn't mention this. So this needs to be said. The Grey Knights are the keepers of something called the Terminus Decree. The Terminus Decree. Yes. It is the final secret of their chapter, and it is something that will either save the Imperium in its darkest hour... Or destroy it from the foundations. Yeah. That is um that is the world's most important loot box. Oh, one million percent. It's buried in the tomb of Malkador, and it's a simple wooden box with a seal that contains instructions. Only the head honcho of the Grey Knights knows how to open that box, and he's currently in the warp cosplaying as Doom Guy. Basically, and nobody else knows. Nobody knows how to. Nobody else knows how to open the box, and only one person knows what those instructions actually are, and it's the emperor himself. Of course, it's the emperor himself. Okay, here's a spoiler alert. Whenever there's only one person who knows something, it's the emperor. It's the emperor. He sees all. He sees all. Yes, yes, yes. He's basically a, a chaos god at this point. I get it. Exactly. But the only clue that we do have as to what's on that little or what's in that box is the seal holding it shut because that seal does not exist anywhere else in the Imperium except for on Earth itself. For on the Golden Throne is an exact one of one replica of that seal. Or match, I should say, of that seal. What, does he have the signet ring for the seal or does he just have the same seal? The seal somewhere. In 40k seals are kind of loose it could be an actual like seal wax like, like, seal it could be an actual wax seal it could be a more magical seal you mm. know or, or it could be a literal seal i doubt it's literally flopping sealed. flopping on an iceberg going arr, 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 arr. i doubt it's a literal seal but who knows moral <laughs> of the story is it's important enough to be right there with the emperor so it's something in that box yeah and uh, that just goes to show you that I really barely needed to be their state-mandated hype men. The Grey Knights have all the hype they They're need. They're so hype. They ba- barely need a hype man. Oh, 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 yeah. One million percent. They barely need hype men. But as if all that wasn't enough, they are also the only space marines that give custodies a second to pause. And in some cases, outright jealousy. Making the custodies jealous? Yeah, yeah. 
Because the Custodes were the Emperor's finest works, literally made by hand by him, better than Space Marines in every way. They were built not only to wage war like the Space Marines, but to rule effectively afterwards. Every Custodes is a trained marksman, swordsman, and general, while also being an expressive poet, a luminary artist, and writers capable of penning sagas. Wonderful. We love ourselves a good uh, battle bard. Exactly. Custodes were who the emperor confided in. Custodes were his end vision. They were warriors to usher in a blindingly bright future and the guardians to keep it that way. They were his literal golden boys. They answered to nobody but the emperor and they only know him as their progenitor. So you can imagine when the emperor was at his lowest moments caused by the irrationality and weaknesses of space marines, it would leave some custodies a little infuriated that his solution was to refine the space marines further instead of leaning on what he already has. I can see that as being a little bit upset. If you're if you're the golden boys and suddenly your dad creates the silver boys and actually says the silver boys are better than you. Exactly. He created space marines that directly tie to him in the same way that only the custodies and primarchs do. And yet, they're just as close as they are. Custodies have spent thousands of years getting this close to the Emperor, and then Grey Knights popped out, and they were just there. It's like when you have a little brother, and suddenly they start hogging all the attention. You're like, what? What? Where did you come from? Where Do you think you own the place? Exactly. Get Th- out. This rubs some custodies the wrong way, but others have different concerns, because they worry, what if I'm not the vision for the future like I always thought? Mm. because the emperor did have we're going to cover this when we inevitably do an emperor 20 part episode because <laughs> i'm not joking he has a hundred books to his name easily he's big he's he's big e he's big yes but the emperor has had other warriors before that all mysteriously mm. when their time was up Mm-mm. so what if the custodies were not the bright future they envisioned and instead it was the Grey Knights. They were his last design. What if they're really the truest glimpse into what he saw coming? Mm, I can see I can see where a little bit of their upset and paranoia comes from. Mm-hmm. Of course, no custodies will ever, ever, ever voice these opinions. No. Ever. And it It'd will be heresy. Not, not not no, not even heresy. It custodies no Almost better than anybody else in the Imperium, what they truly are. They, 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 cause, oh, I love this so much. We're going to cover this more when you do a Custodes episode. But they lament what the Imperium has become because they knew what they were fighting for originally. They knew about the Emperor's original goal and they now know that it will never come to pass. Yeah, because the Imperium at this point is in such a, yes. a, a, a state. But they still do their jobs. So even though they may feel this way, they do not let it affect how they do their job. They just do they their job. For, it, it's why the Emperor relied on them. It's why they are his bodyguards. Because they will just firm it. It doesn't matter how I feel. I will do it. Because this is what I have to. This for, is what I have. Forever. So they'll never voice these opinions. And it doesn't change how they do their voice, their jobs at all. However, just because they have weird feelings does not mean that they're equal in any way, shape, or form. A single Custodes versus a Grey Knight is a beatdown. It is not even close. Custodes are truly, truly fighters without equal. They're huge. They're, they're hu- beyond huge. They could... What your average guardsman sees when a Space Marine is just mobbing through enemies is what a Space Marine sees when a Custodes appears. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. They can fight off an entire squad of Space Marines with relative ease. That's that's scary. Yes. They're, they really are big. They are... Grey Knights do not stand a chance against Custodes, but if there ever was a Space Marine that would get close, it would be It would them, be the Grey Knights. Because, now granted, this is Grey Knights in their element fighting demons, but... They were able to keep up, a squad of them was able to keep up with one Custodes. Mm. Which, again, a whole squad of them doing their very best at what they were made to do could 
almost keep up with the custodies. The custodies are still again. I need a. I need. I don't even. You know what? I'd like to table my previous suggestion. I want a custodies horror game with the Sister <laughs> of Silence. I would love, love to play a psyker and one custodies somewhere. Just one. That's all I need. It would be. It'd be unwinnable, but it'd be fun. It'd be fun to oh, just run man. away. You're playing. You're playing Temple Run, but like instead of being chased by run. those weird ape creatures, it's a it's a Sister of Silence and a Custodian. You, you couldn't. You can run. There's no hope. You're not ever physically speaking. You cannot beat a Custodian at anything. You can try your best. It doesn't matter. The the indomitable human spirit. Nope. Doesn't matter. Will not change a thing. The indomitable human spirit. Farting into a hurricane <laughs> doesn't accomplish a thing. Except now I smell worse. That's it. Custodians <laughs> are horrifying. But, to give Grey Knights some flowers back, they are unmatched psychers. They're big. They are very big. I'm not sure what would happen to a Grey Knight near Sister of Silence. It's a very good question, because they are the best psychers the Imperium has. But Sisters of Silence are kind of the anathema to them. They're they're blanks. Blanks are blanks. I I need to do more reading into that, honestly. But that is where those two stand that had to be touched on, because it's such a fun family dynamic. And now, while the amazing names of our Patreon dazzle your eyes, and for those of you listening, just imagine the coolest people you can think of squared. (laughs) Let's do our foreign fracas. Or international incident. It's a working title. That's the full title. (laughs) By now you know the drill. But for those of you new and have made it this far, uh, in one of the very first episodes, I mentioned that uh, the Australians were running the game on streams and comments and downloads in, uh, God, in the review system too. They were killing it that week, and I figured I'd give them some flowers and, you know, give them a fun, share, share with the world a fun fact about them. It has since become an international pissing contest. <laughs> With the U.S. being so dominant, they had to have a nerf in the last patch, which I see you guys in the Midwest. I hear your concerns. Again, I may tweak it as we go. Yeah, we will will adjust. The the Midwest still had a strong showing, I'd like to add. So it's not like you're suffering either. I see your efforts. I I did see one comment in specific saying, oh, no, my my Midwest, we're not going to win any of these. It's It's possible. Don't don't, don't worry. We we are hearing you guys. We'll we'll adjust things as we go. Exactly. And this week's winner was Almost the West. This close, but, but the Germans spent more time watching the videos, which pushed them over the edge and listening to the content. They spent more time engaging with us. And so, despite that accent, man, I don't know how. But this week goes to the Germans. And as penance for Coda's accent, you get two fun facts. Hmm. Because I saw this coming. He saw this coming. He knew I was going to do this stupid accent. This is only going to get worse as we go, by the way, so brace. Mm. The first is, did you know that there are more castles in Germany than McDonald's? In the U.S. Uh, 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 There are more castles built in Germany than McDonald's in the United States. That's a lot of... Pardon my French goddamn castles. You know what that showed me? There is yet hope for my nine-year-old dream. What is that? To own a castle. (laughs) You just have to move to Germany. Oh, one million percent. It's okay. I've already got... I'm halfway there to naturalization. I've got the accent down pat. You're more like halfway there from boring me from ever entering the country. (laughs) But yes, I saw that. That was amazing. It gave... Tiny, tiny nine-year-old me. So much hope. That's insane. You know that one clip of Charlie going, Whoa! <laughs> that, that was, that was, <laughs> yeah, this is what we play for. Yeah, that was that was, that was was me discovering that there are that many castles out there. I was like, there is hope! Let's go! And then the other fun fact, this one does relate to castles and royalty. Well, this one's not very fun, but it is funny. Uh, morbid, actually. Oh. Is well in, in Erfurt, there was a, quote, latrine disaster. I don't, I already don't like this. I love this, because this proves why you need architects and planning in your life. I really don't like the sound of a latrine disaster. In the Middle Ages, there was quite the little spat happening, and the king at the time, Henry, called for kind of ceasefire to talk things out, and it was held in Erfurt. 
Now, this facility that they held it in was not made to accommodate this many people, mm. and its weak wooden floor gave way. Beneath it was the septic tank. Or the medieval equivalent of a septic tank. Which is a septic pit. A pit. Exactly. It led to 60 deaths. Oh. And King Henry barely making it out by swimming for dear life. And my favorite is, quote, he left as soon as possible and never went back to Erfurt. I wouldn't either. Yeah. I wouldn't either. And so that is the latrine disaster from quite a few hundred years ago. Makes you feel glad for modern plumbing, doesn't it? Right? Plumbers, plumbers deserve everything they have, honestly. I'm so glad... I'm s- I will never make fun of a plumber's crack ever again because at least we don't need to deal with septic pits anymore right below well, our the floorboards. Problem, the problem isn't the septic pit. It's technically the floorboards because the septic pit was fine. It was the floorboard yeah, that gave way. But who the hell decided to put the septic pit right below the house? The same person who probably thought, mm, why would the floorboards give way? You don't plan for floorboards giving way. They're floorboards. Oh, God. But yes, that's disgust. Swim for his life. Swim. Swim. Yes. And so I hope that made you feel something. <laughs> I feel like I need to go take a shower. And if you enjoyed this episode, we have tons of others on the channel. There's, in fact, a whole playlist just for 40K. So please check that out. And we will see you next week for the episode on the Tau on Saturday. <gasps> the Tau? Yeah, there's. Th- ooh. Well, I guess you know now. <laughs> I suppose yeah, you made it this far. Congrats. You now know. And uh, for you Patreon cat's people, there will the be... That cat staying in the bag, but there will be a bonus episode on Wednesday. I will see you there. And as always, thank you for being you.